America has taken a stand against the Chinese Communist Party. The Senate passed two new bills supporting Hong Kong protesters, but Hong Kong's freedoms are still under siege. This is China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Before we begin, remember, YouTube is soft censoring China Uncensored. All our Hong Kong episodes are instantly demonetized, and there's really not a lot we can do about it, which is why we rely on your support. If you can, contribute to the show on the crowdfunding website Patreon. We'll give you some cool stuff depending on your level of support. It's patreon.com slash China Uncensored, and the link is below. So with all that out of the way, Good news on Hong Kong! Finally! Over the past few decades, U.S. officials, both Democrats and Republicans, really dropped the ball on China. But now, miraculously, Democrats and Republicans are working together. And in real life, not on an episode of The West Wing. What inspired both sides to reach across the aisle? A scrappy little region halfway around the world, standing up for freedom and democracy, looking to America to stand with them. Wait, maybe this is an episode of The West Wing. No, The West Wing has better music. This week, the U.S. Senate unanimously passed both the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act and the Protect Hong Kong Act. And again, unanimously means that all the Democrats and all the Republicans agreed on something. The Senate has just sent a resounding message to the Chinese Communist Party and President Xi that the United States stands with the democratic protesters in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act is important legislation. It is bipartisan legislation. The people in Hong Kong are engaged in an existential battle for liberty. Hey, that's Democrat Chuck Schumer agreeing with Republican Ted Cruz. In fact, 13 U.S. Senators, both Democrats and Republicans, used this opportunity to speak in support of the Hong Kong protesters. They also trashed the Chinese Communist Party for its human rights abuses, including putting the Uyghurs in concentration camps, crushing democracy activists, and harvesting organs from Falun Gong practitioners. That's right. U.S. Senators called out the Chinese regime for killing political prisoners for their organs. That is the number one thing that the Chinese Communist Party does not want people to talk about. What is this strange thing I'm feeling? Am I proud of the U.S. Congress? While I come to grips with this strange new reality, here's Republican Senator Marco Rubio on what the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act does. Its most important element is it requires the Secretary of State to annually certify whether Hong Kong warrants being treated differently than China. If Hong Kong is no longer autonomous, and that's the rationale for different treatment, then they should no longer receive that treatment. For instance, all the tariffs Trump has hit China with would also apply to Hong Kong. This bill also gives the U.S. government the ability to sanction individuals who violate human rights in Hong Kong and deny them entry to the U.S. Meanwhile, the Protect Hong Kong Act bans U.S. companies from selling crowd control tools to Hong Kong police. Things like tear gas, rubber bullets, pepper spray, and water cannons. No more Remington shotguns for this guy. But these bills aren't done yet. Both bills have been approved by the U.S. House of Representatives, but they still need to be signed into law by President Trump. Now, this may surprise you, but the Chinese Communist Party is not happy about this. The aim of this act is to support those extreme forces who are seeking to oppose China and cause chaos, damage Hong Kong's prosperity and stability, and use sinister smearing of the Hong Kong issue to obstruct China's development. Yes, the U.S. sure is smearing the perfectly innocent Hong Kong and Chinese governments. Meanwhile, state-run CCTV's National Evening News program included 11 different segments criticizing the U.S. for the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act. Tell us how you really feel. So, remember that former U.K. consulate employee who was detained in China? Simon Chung? Yeah, the Chinese secret police tortured him. 
Apparently, the Chinese police were so sure that the UK was behind the protests in Hong Kong that they tortured him to get answers. And get this, they abducted him inside Hong Kong, here at the West Kowloon train station. It's the terminal for the high-speed train that links Hong Kong to mainland China. It's in Hong Kong, but last year, the Hong Kong government ceded part of it to mainland Chinese authority. And so that's why Chinese secret police were able to abduct a Hong Kong citizen in Hong Kong and then bring him to mainland China for torture. And the secret police didn't just torture Simon Chung, they tried to turn him into a spy for China and then monitored him even after he was released back into Hong Kong. He's now fled to another country. Chung also says that while he was in the Chinese detention center, he saw other Hong Kong protesters there. And the secret police told him they had captured batches of Hong Kong protesters and brought them to mainland China, which is pretty much everything that people in Hong Kong were afraid of in the first place. Yeah, clearly Hong Kong people have no reason to protest because it's all the doings of the UK. You evil mastermind. Now it may surprise you, but China denies Simon Chung's torture claim. During Simon Chung's detention, the Public Security Unit guaranteed all of his rights and interests according to law. Zheng Wenjie also made a full confession about his illegal actions. By the way, here's a photo of Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Geng Shuang to use on the dartboard at your local pub. Extra points if you hit him in the heart. Just kidding. He doesn't have one. The Epic Times is one of the few remaining Chinese-language newspapers in Hong Kong that refuses to bow to the Chinese regime's censorship. It was founded by Chinese dissidents, including Falun Gong practitioners, and the paper has been supportive of the Hong Kong protesters. So it wasn't all that surprising when a group of masked thugs wielding police batons broke into the Epic Times printing press in Hong Kong, and then they lit the place on fire. So. Freedom of the press is doing great in Hong Kong. Hong Kong protesters often wear face masks to hide their identities because they're afraid the government will go after them. But on October 4th, the Hong Kong government went after them anyway. They used emergency powers to ban people from wearing masks at protests. Not that it actually stopped people from wearing masks, it just made all the protesters into criminals. But good news. This week, a Hong Kong court ruled the mask ban is unconstitutional, and the government said they would stop enforcing it. But then, bad news. China's National People's Congress said Hong Kong courts don't have the power to rule about what is and what isn't constitutional since Hong Kong is a part of China, which is a hint that China can just upend Hong Kong's entire legal system. China's National People's Congress is clearly oblivious as to why people began protesting in the first place. That National People's Congress, you guys really are NPCs. But this gives me hope that maybe someday soon, everyone in Hong Kong might join together and fight their real enemy, the Chinese Communist Party. And that's the latest from us on Hong Kong. What do you think? Leave your comments below. And as I mentioned, YouTube demonetizes episodes like this because it considers Hong Kong to be too controversial a subject for advertisers. So, as a thank you to fans who support the show on Patreon, I answer their questions at the end of some of my episodes. This question comes from Larry Breyer. I hear comparisons between Tiananmen Square Massacre and what could happen to Hong Kong. I would like to remind people of one big difference. Beijing was only Chinese people. Hong Kong is an international city. As long as many people from all over the world visit Hong Kong, would the CCP dare risk murdering foreigners in order to put down rebellion? I wonder if the people of the world could protect Hong Kong by standing beside the protesters. Good question, Larry. The Chinese Communist Party does not want to murder foreigners. Well, okay, maybe they do, but they don't want to get into trouble over it. When I was in Hong Kong in June, I felt like police were careful not to aggravate foreign reporters like me. But then in October, police shoved us around like it didn't matter how obviously foreign we looked. Police have also arrested some foreigners and have searched foreign tourists. 
This is a big change in mentality in the police. But still, the Chinese Communist Party would rather solve this without having to hurt foreigners, especially Americans, because there's already enough pressure on them. And it could mess up the U.S.-China trade deal. So more foreigners on the ground observing what's happening can definitely help. But as the police get more aggressive, it's probably not going to stop them from hurting Hong Kongers. And keep in mind that those foreigners are still taking a risk by just being there, especially now that the police have promised to use deadly force. Thanks for your question, Larry. And thank you everyone for watching and supporting China Uncensored. If you're not a patron yet, join our 50 cent army. Go to patreon.com slash China Uncensored and contribute. The link is below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.